advised that this recorded webinar has been edited from its original format, which may have included a product demo. To set up a live demo or to request more information, please complete the form to the right. Or if you are currently not on CSC Global, there is a link to the website in the description of this video. Thank you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Why Customers Change Registered Agent to CSC. My name is Annie Tribaletti, and I will be your moderator. Joining us today are David Jeffries and Shayla McDevitt. David is a Senior Director of Product Management for Global Compliance at CSC in the Wilmington, Delaware office. With CSC for over 14 years, he has significant experience providing training, implementation, and consultative services to clients of CSC Entity Management and consults with those evaluating CSC Matter Management solutions. Shayla is a Corporate Solutions Manager for the Corporate Legal Solutions Division of CSC and has over 16 years of experience. She is responsible for customer satisfaction, technology training, and new services. And with that, let's welcome Shayla and David. Annie, thank you. And thank you to all of the attendees for joining us today. Here's what you can expect out of this session. New challenges presented to legal and finance teams given the current compliance management climate and throughout the session will provide resources to help. We'll discuss the role of a registered agent and how that has evolved to be much more than just service of process delivery. We'll present what it means to us to be your registered agent and how we add value to other activities such as Secretary of State filings, document and entity management. We'll discuss data security, how organizations can change their registered agent in an easy and effective way. And then we'll wrap up with a demonstration of our CSC Navigator technology, and we'll also leave some time for Q&A at the end. Working in a corporate legal department or for the finance team was already a challenging career, but 2020 brought with it many new problems. So we'd like to take the opportunity to acknowledge you and all you've had to juggle and are still juggling. So I will pass it to my colleague, David, to dig in more on that topic. The content that you're seeing on this slide comes from a survey that Thompson Reuters did recently around some of the challenges and how organizations are adapting as a result of the pandemic. And so there's what they're describing as four work streams, and we'll see a couple of them on this slide. We'll see two more on the next uh, that have really come out as a result of you know, what happened in 2020. The first one being just adapting to the regulations and the requirements, which obviously has been challenging where if you're an organization where you have entities in multiple jurisdictions, nothing is really consistent from one state to another. So certainly that brings some challenges. And then I think the biggest impact for all organizations really has been the need to pivot to a remote work environment. But another part of the study, which I found fascinating, although it's not represented on this slide, is that 58% of the surveyed corporate legal departments indicated that as a consequence of the pandemic, the workload actually has increased, which is maybe not surprising Surprising, given all the change and disruption, but interestingly, only 6% said that the budgets have increased, whereas I think it was about 29 said that their budgets actually decreased. So even before the pandemic, there was this really unfair mandate on the corporate legal department to somehow do more with less, and now that really seems to be the norm. When you look at work stream number one, you may think uh, you'll see that item there where it says a single state operation is a, is a position of strength. How could that be a point of strength? especially if maybe you're in a single state where things were shut down. But I think really what the survey is indicating is that the challenges really start to get uh, a bit overwhelming for organizations that have a broader geographical footprint. So for the legal department, a single jurisdiction organization only had to deal with the restrictions in one state. Whereas again, if you're maybe in the service industry, let's say a restaurant train and you have uh, operations and entities all over the US and you're dealing with different states closing, reopening, et cetera, it could be just very challenging to stay on top of that. Uh, plus different counties have different registrations and, uh, and different regulations. So there must have been just uh, an amazing amount of complexity to kind of deal with all of that. So I think what we're saying here is that, you know, being in a single state is, is really, um, again, a little bit of a stronger position than those that had to deal with the complexities of, of that across the U.S. Uh, footprint. On the next slide, you can see the other work streams, which are three and four, I'll bring the fourth into view, uh, that were identified in the Thompson Reuters survey. I think the big thing, honestly, to pull from all of this is that we talked about the mandate for legal departments to somehow do more with less, and I think what we've seen is that corporate legal departments are really finding creative ways to lean on providers to add expertise, 
outsource where possible. Uh, and a lot of that outsource work is going to uh, providers that are described as alternative legal service providers, meaning that they offer legal and compliance services and they aren't traditional law firms. That's really a trend that we're seeing in the marketplace. And we really believe that technology can be a silver bullet. We're having a technology solution that allows for transparency and collaboration. Again, remembering that a lot of folks are still in a remote work environment is really critical. And so I think the other thing that this study talks about is there's an expectation. We've already seen it where, again, litigation is on the rise by virtue of disputes and disruption. And M&A, it is uh, just on fire. So, you know, 2019, M&A was very hot. Uh, things seemed like it would continue in 2020, and then everything came to a standstill with the pandemic. But really what we've seen in 2021 is a just really a rapid reinvigoration of mergers and acquisitions and deals. And for folks in the corporate legal department, you know what that means in terms of all the activity that goes into the due diligence. And more than ever, really, I think what we're seeing is there's a pressure for corporate legal departments to have their organizations deal ready, where maintaining good standing and compliance is really uh, perhaps more critical than ever. And so we expect these teams to be incredibly called upon to just deliver for the organizations, and more and more they're expected to be really advisors to the organization as well. So I think we see that coming out as a result of 2020. So where do we find ourselves in 2021, and really what does this all mean for corporate legal teams? So I think we've seen some things, as I mentioned on the prior slide, where again litigation is on the rise. And as I think everyone knows, mergers and acquisitions are just you know, kind of gangbusters. So again, another thing that I think we're seeing is that there's new legislative developments. For example, the Corporate Transparency Act, which made some headlines earlier in the year, where there's a requirement to start disclosing ownership for what's often referred to as ultimate beneficial ownership, which is something that we've seen in other parts of the world. And really one way to think of it is it's really coming home, so to speak, if you're a person that's based here in the U.S. And that's something that we've seen before, where again, a few years ago, uh, GDPR was a game changer in Europe around privacy and data protection. And then more recently, we saw the California Consumer Privacy Act in the state of California here in the U.S. So uh, that trend of increasing legislation and regulation, uh, again, continues. And, and I hate to say it's a new normal, but that's really what we're seeing over time, what we've seen and what we expect to see continue into the future. And so I think what corporate legal departments are starting to do is, again, leverage technology where possible, partner with organizations like CSC to streamline operations and to be able to free yourself up to work on things that are more critical to your organization. So again, outsource where it makes sense, and then being able to work on projects and objectives that are more strategic for the direction of your business. And now that we've talked a little bit about some of the challenges that organizations are facing and how they're adapting, uh, we really want to go into um, how CSC can help organizations. But to level set, we want to define you know, what is the role of the registered agent. So this is where I'm going to bring my colleague Chayla back into the conversation. What does a registered agent do? A registered agent is an individual or third party responsible for accepting court paperwork or other legal documents on behalf of a company. So those documents could be service of process or maybe wage garnishment. Um, the registered agent does have to have an address within the jurisdiction that's being served, so that's an important part of it as well. And then most organizations are leaning on their registered agent for additional things, like helping them stay in good standing, mostly because tracking Secretary of State due dates can be a bear, um, mostly because every state's different and even how they do the due dates is different. You know, sometimes it's based on anniversary date or standard by entity type, um, and some are every two years or every 10 years. So it's a bit all over the place. So most organizations use their registered agent um, for a calendar of due dates or email reminders. And that's where they can provide that insight for the company to stay in good standing. The registered agent may also um, store and send legal documents, so primarily that's going to be the service of process, um, but it may be more than that. Um, sometimes there are other documents such as um, legalization, business licenses, there's, there's all kinds of things that um, we can get involved with, and, and we'll cover that today. Uh, also, just to mention with the store and, and sending legal documents, um, you know, later in the presentation, we're going to get into security, and that's because um, although service of process is public record and in the court system, the aggregate for organizations that have many companies, it is not. Um, so security is 
is very important, and it, um, as everyone knows, but why it relates to this session today. Um, and also, sometimes registered agents are handling documents like business licenses that may include um, personal information for the officer. So that will come into play later in the session today. Um, and sometimes the registered agent is also used um, to provide expertise um, in, in other jurisdictions. So maybe not just the Secretary of State, but also sometimes um, county offices. First and foremost, it's the registered agent's job to be available Monday through Friday during normal business hours to receive service of process. And that could be any type of legal action. Um, it also can include things like wage garnishments, subpoenas, bankruptcy, or foreclosure notices, depending on the serving party. They will often send that to the registered agent. So the registered agent has to always be available to receive that service of process. Many companies will also use their registered agent's technology for entity management, and that can be one reason why organizations decide to evaluate a registered agent is because they want to get all of their entities together with one provider so that they have somewhere that they can log in, see all of their companies in one place, and all of their key details and then also those good standing dates, those annual reports and Secretary of State renewals that I mentioned. And with CSC, and we'll show this um, in the technology demonstration, it's also tracking the status um, for any changes to the name or falling out of good standing for the entities that we represent. So a registered agent can really add value to the entity management process as well. So now that we've talked about the fundamental role that a registration provides around service of process and around helping organizations have transparency around their entities, we do want to sort of transition out into talking more specifically about CSE as a company, and then we'll get into why organizations ultimately select CSE as their registered agent. CSE is the largest U.S.-owned registered agent uh, and we're very proud of that distinction. Uh, and again, certainly our, our presentation today is going to focus largely around those services. We're, we're proud to say that we can trace our roots back to 1899. So we've been in this registration compliance business for over a century. But uh, certainly our services go beyond that. A little bit uh, towards the end of the presentation, we'll provide a quick overview of the kind of the breadth of our services. But you'll see some of the sort of notable facts here that we service over 180,000 corporate clients. We represent some of the world's largest uh, domains in terms of uh, trademarks and intellectual property protection. Uh, we service uh, you know, thousands of organizations in the financial market, and we're also very proud to say that over 90% of the Fortune 500 utilize CSE for at least one of the services that we offer. So, Chael, you mentioned earlier that we were going to talk about some of the resources that CSE offers our customers. So did you want to talk a little bit about this slide? Yes. So. This is a really great example of how registered agent support can go past the service of process. CSE launched this resource center last year because there were a lot of state offices that had to close during the pandemic. Um, some of them closed, reopened, and then closed again. And for clients that needed to get documents filed, we wanted to provide a way for them to know the status. Um, so we have here the web address, and I'd like to invite everyone um, to maybe copy and paste that and bookmark it, or you can get it from the Resource Center. Um, there is a ton of great information here um, that I find really helpful in my day-to-day. -day. So the state closures uh, are available, and they're reopening plans. Because we also work with over 1,900 business licenses, local jurisdictions. We also have their current status and how to submit documents. Same thing for the county offices where real estate documents get recorded. Last year, and I'm sure most of the legal folks on the phone know this, um, one of the big challenges was getting documents signed because some states were still requiring a wet ink signature. Um, but Folks were working from home. State offices weren't accepting actual physical documents in their hand. 
Um, so what happened was the states um, started enacting legislation to take different forms of signatures. And they also started to take different forms of notarization. And with that, we saw a lot of new states start to accept remote online notarization, which is really pretty cool. Um, so if you go to the Resource Center and you click on that remote online notarization, it gives you a breakdown of every state and what they accept and then the statutes that you can reference. Um, so there's a lot of great stuff here, and I hope you take a minute to check it out. And again, we do want to thank our audience for participating in the polls. Now we're getting into what I'll call the meat of the presentation. You know, why is it that organizations change registration to CSC? We think there are uh, a range of, of answers to that question, but we really want to focus on the ones that we think um, you know, are most relevant, that we hear most often. So, uh, Jill, I'm going to turn things over to you to kind of get this section uh, off the ground and running. Thank you, David. So we've broken down the reasons organizations use CSC into four main categories. Expert service, um, like you saw in our bios, you know, David's worked here over a decade, so have I. And that's pretty common because CSC is a wonderful place to work. Um, so we can brag a little bit and say that the average tenure of our customer service team is over 10 years. So that's what really allows us to be experts is People stay working here, and they learn as they go. Uh, the next is robust technology. I sometimes kid that we're the tech nerds of the registered agent industry. Um, but it is, it's very important to us that we're providing the best technology out there and the best security. Um, CSC does go through a third-party audit every year, and we maintain that SOC 2 Type 2 certification. And that's really our commitment to maintaining the highest levels of client service, confidence, and data security. And then the, the last uh, category here is seamless transition. So sometimes it may seem like too much of a project to change your agent or consolidate registered agents, but we have the process down to a science and make it really easy. Uh, and it not only is easy, but it also provides a really great um, cleaning house opportunity because we do a full audit um, of the companies to find all their registrations. And I will later in the presentation break that down exactly how that works. The relentless commitment to customer service is part of the culture here. So we tailor an account team based on the needs of the client. We always provide ongoing training and support, and there are never any fees for training and support. Our customer service team is available coast to coast business hours. So if you're on the East Coast, West Coast, we're always available 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. We have a full-time team that is dedicated just to the change of agent. So if you're thinking, I'd like to maybe consider a change of agent, um, please know that we have a team that will do that for you, and they make it very streamlined and efficient. And in terms of our net promoter scores, so NPS being how likely others would be to recommend CSD, we align with world-class organizations like Apple, Chick-fil-A, and even Disney. As I mentioned, a registered agent's role can be much more than just receiving and delivering service of process. CSC is a complete partner for compliance management throughout the life cycle of your entities. We form all different types of companies all over the world, corporations, LLCs, nonprofit organizations, international entities in over 140 jurisdictions. We also create and administer special purpose vehicles. Once an entity is formed, there is maintenance to it, and we are also a trusted partner through this stage of an entity from our award-winning entity management technology that allows you to track officers, directors, ownership, and build org charts. For many organizations, we prepare and file their annual reports because they want that risk clearly with the experts. Um, we service and report preparation and filing in all the U.S. states and, and D.C. Um, even for clients that don't have us file, we provide the email reminders for when they're due. We work with business licenses, which vary 
depending on the business activity or where the business has locations. Uh, and so we can research requirements. We can audit locations to make sure they have the right licenses. And then, of course, we prepare, file, and track their due dates. And then for organizations that are managing a lot of contracts or leases, agreements, or other legal documents, they may rely on CSD for matter management technology as a way to collaborate and track key dates around those matters. As your business grows, we can help with expansion. Um, internationally, we can help by forming entities, providing a corporate health check on maybe an acquired entity to ensure that it has all the right documents and officers and directors in place as it should. We also support transactional filings all over the world. So not just formations, but we also do um, certificate of authority or qualification to do business in a new state. We can file amendments, withdrawals, and dissolutions. We do the publishing and recording that comes with that. Um, if we're talking about local filings, like with business licenses, um, maybe there's an acquired entity and you want to get the business licenses transferred over um, to the new owner's name, that's another type of research and, and expansion service that we help with. Also, address changes. Um, if you're going through an address change, we're a great partner. We have resources that provide you with instructions on how to change the address for an entity in every state um, specific to an entity type. I may have already mentioned this, but to complete the life cycle, we can also help with winding entities down. So in a domestic state, that would be a dissolution, or in a qualified state, that would be a withdrawal. Um, we can help in many ways. So maybe you rely on us to prepare and file the documents and, and do all the work for you. Um, even for our clients that want to do that work on their own, we provide a great resource and in that uh, through our web portal that David will show you here in a bit, um, we have all of the forms available for dissolutions and withdrawals and actually all the different state filings. They're always converted to a fillable PDF. So when you pull the form with CSD, you'll be able to type right into it. And we also provide instructions. And that's really helpful, especially with the withdrawals and dissolutions. Uh, they can be some of the more challenging filings because they may have side steps, like you may need to get tax clearance first. And then after the fact, you may need to publish or record the filing. Um, so we provide all the forms and instructions to our clients at no charge. And if you want us to do the work for you, we can do free estimates. So getting in uh, to some detail around the technology that we offer, uh, I want to talk about information that flows automatically into our Navigator platform when CSC is acting as a registered agent or, or around your entity specifically. So uh, when CSC is named as agent, when we're acting in that capacity, we're going to know the names of those companies, where they're formed and qualified, statuses, dates of authorization, and it builds out this amazing uh, foundational set of information that you can start to build and manage from. Our compliance calendar also automatically provides insight into when the next set of annual filings are coming due. Anytime you engage CSC for a filing, so if you have us form a new entity, uh, you know, qualify in a new state or withdraw from an old state, uh, do a name change or dissolve an entity as just a few examples, the data changes associated with those filings and then the supporting documents, we often call that the evidence of the filing that comes back from uh, the filing registry, which in many cases would be a Secretary of State, those documents actually flow into our platform as well. Um, and that, again, is just complementary with CSE acting as your registered agent. And it really speaks to one of our great strengths, which is that it's really the, the blending and the marriage, so to speak, of the services that we offer and the technology that supports that. If you as an organization have entity management needs that extend beyond sort of that, those foundational basics and perhaps you want to be able to track directors and officers and have a secure portal for uploading minute books, looking at potentially you know, tracking ownership and wanting to create visual org charts of how your entities come together from a structural standpoint. We also offer an award-winning entity management solution that does all those things and more. So having talked a little bit about the role that CSC plays in terms of giving you transparency to your entities, let's get right back to service of process. It's, it's that other key thing, uh, that key foundational responsibility that, that a registered agent has. And so let's talk specifically about how CSE handles service of process documents. Fundamentally, I think the biggest thing that I want to uh, talk about on this slide is the fact that CSE uh, takes complete ownership and responsibility 
for the intake and delivery of your SAP documents. We do not outsource this function to a third party. We don't offshore this to another part of the world. Only vetted US-based CSE employees have the responsibility to process SAP documents, something that we'll talk about in more detail on just a, a slide or two. So a lot of times when organizations think about the role of registration around SOP, uh, you think of it as just you know, receiving and delivering. And really what this slide uh, looks to do is try to create uh, some, some visibility to the fact that it really goes beyond that. So yes, absolutely, the, the, the registered agent has that key critical role of receiving some of the process, making sure that it's available electronically, delivering it, so to speak, but there's so much more to it. So for example, uh, distribution. Uh, we work with a lot of organizations that have um, what we'll call routing rules or where they will say that, you know, based on the type of service or process, there are different individuals within the organization that would be responsible for receiving them. So, for example, there might be a team responsible for garnishments. There might be a different set of individuals responsible for subpoenas. There might be certain uh, types of uh, SAP documents that go right to a risk uh, team within the organization. And so uh, CSE has technology where we effectively can uh, electronically notify and distribute those documents to the right set of individuals in a very efficient fashion. Also, kind of building around this continuum, we have really powerful technology, not just to give you oversight around your SOP, but also advanced searching, reporting, and some analytics that give you uh, controls and, and just sort of uh, a complete picture uh, of your service or process. So now let's get into even a little bit more detail in terms of how CSE handles SOP. This is the stuff that, that, that I'm really interested in, so we're calling this our SOP logistics. So first and foremost, we do have a presence uh, throughout the U.S. where we have offices that are responsible for the physical receipt and intake uh, of, of SOP documents. Uh, we ensure that every single document that we receive goes through a type of scanning known as OCR, which stands for Optical Character Recognition, which ensures that your SOP documents are fully text searchable. We also put tremendous effort into ensuring that we're delivering what I would describe as a consistent work product so that the uh, images not only are clean and clear and crisp, which is a function of the scanning technology that we use, but also pages are right side up. They're in the proper sequential order so that you have a, a working document that is easy uh, to digest and, and make a part of your, uh, your SOP sort of response process, so to speak. Also, again, we highlighted this before, I mentioned it before, but only uh, CSE employees are making decisions about your SOP. So the individuals that are receiving the service of process are quickly getting those documents into our uh, SOP network. We have a team that quickly triages documents to ensure that any document that is incredibly time sensitive uh, is uh, processed as quickly as possible. We do, of course, recognize that all documents have an answer date, so they are all ticking clocks uh, in that sense. However, some documents have incredibly short turnaround response time. So those documents are prioritized so that they are more efficiently delivered to customers electronically through our technology, which we'll see a little bit further on in the demo. And then we also make sure that our customers have great tools around acknowledging SAP, so effectively confirming that, yes, we have received it. And if that acknowledgement is not occurring in a proper time frame, we have safeguards in place to have the technology remind you, or CSC also can play a role in reaching out to, again, ensure that you have uh, received, and you are, again, in a timely fashion responding to SAP documents. So a few slides back when we were talking a bit about, you know, managing entities with CSA, we talked about the fact that there are sort of, you know, scalable options depending on your needs, right? We have our, our kind of our standard offering, and then we have that advanced solution that we call CSE Entity Management. And really it's, it's a kind of a, it, in fact, it is a very similar story when it comes to managing SOP. Um, all clients have access to a platform we call MySOP, which is a part of our Navigator solution, but certainly we also work with a number of organizations that have uh, complexity and, and, and advanced needs, I would say, around managing a high volume of SOP and litigation. So we have um, enhanced technology tools in the form of a platform we call SOP Manager, as well as a solution that we call CSE Matter Management, where uh, there are just advanced capabilities around searching, reporting, collaboration, uh, and analytics so that, again, if you're dealing with more than just a handful of SOP here and there, and you're talking about uh, you know, hundreds or thousands of SOP documents in the course of a year, uh, we have advanced technology tools that help you manage that. But also, we're not looking to necessarily lock you into our technology. Uh, a very popular solution that we offer is the ability to actually integrate uh, SAP documents into other systems. So in some cases, it might be we want to send uh, you know, HR uh, garnishments to uh, you know, an ADP system for processing, or maybe you're using a third-party 
enterprise legal management slash matter management solution, we absolutely can feed the SOB documents that we receive into uh, a third-party matter management solution where, again, it can be a part of your broader uh, enterprise legal management strategy. So when you talk about all the benefits of technology in terms of collaboration and transparency, uh, giving you that central source of truth for entities and SOP, obviously security is paramount, right? If, if we can't keep this information secure and private, it all falls apart uh, immediately, right? So we put incredible investment, time, and effort into ensuring that our technology solutions have the highest degrees uh, of security possible. And so you'll see some bullet points here on the slide. I think Chela mentioned this a little bit earlier, but one of the uh, sort of accreditations, I'll call it, that we go through on an annual basis is that we have uh, third parties come in and audit our controls and procedures around security. And so that's what's known as the SOC 2 Type 2. We also use world-class data centers that have uh, uh, kind of attestations around what's called ISO 27001. We also work with some of the largest financial institutions in the world, and it is not uncommon uh, that we go through detailed security audits. So certainly we have some resources in the resource widget that at a high level speak to how CSE handles security uh, and disaster recovery and continuity business planning, but also uh, we welcome the scrutiny uh, that can come along with this. And so we absolutely, with uh, you know, an NDA in place can provide a great amounts of detail in terms of how we keep our customers' information secure and private. Thank you, David. So hopefully we have sparked some interest in using CSC as your partner for registered agent service. And you may be thinking, how can I do that in a way that's budget friendly and not a burden to my team? And I can tell you, we have it down to a science. So we have a very specific process for this. You're never without a registered agent. And we do an audit so that we find all of your registrations in every state. So the first thing we'll do is we'll assign a dedicated person to handle the transition. We'll get a list of your entities and we'll research them in every single state. So we do your whole portfolio in all states to find the registrations, their file dates, file number, status, and current registered agent. We'll deliver the results of that audit to you in an Excel report to review. You can decide which registration um, you want to change to CSC. And because we find so much, you may even find some that you don't want anymore. So it's a really great opportunity to, to clean up the entities. From there, uh, depending on how you want to do it, the fastest way is we can have you fill out a limited power of attorney. It has to be signed and notarized by an officer of your parent company. And that allows us just the one benefit of we can file the change of agent for you. So it makes it really fast. Um, we can do all the paperwork. Um, but if you want, we can also send you the change of agent forms. They would be fully prepared. You'll just need to sign them and send them back. Um, either way, we file all the documents, and we also cover all the state filing fees with those change of agent filings. Perfect. Thank you. So folks, that is all the time we have for today. If we didn't get to your question, we'll contact you with a response after the webinar. Thank you again, David and Shayla, and thank you to our audience. We hope to see you next time.